Hi guys, welcome to Heartlight Tarot and Astrology. This is going to be a full moon and Scorpio reading for all sun, moon, and rising placements of the sign of Pisces. This full moon takes place in another, um, in a sister water sign. So uh, I feel like it's going to be very beneficial for your energy, Pisces. Um, it ha it's happening in four degrees of Scorpio. It's taking place for you guys if you are a Pisces rising in your ninth house of meaning and, you know, higher education and your philosophy in life and your goals and, you know, legal matters and teaching. And, you know, it's the house of good, you know, it's the house that um, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's a dream house in a way. Um, so, you might be, you might have started something six months ago, right? Because these full moons, they take place after um, uh, something that you planted six months ago, some kind of seed, some kind of, um, you know, hoping and longing for some kind of tangible results in your life. And you're starting to see this. So maybe you're going to start traveling, um, you know, to foreign countries for your job or for religious purposes. Um, to really follow somebody um, that you look up to. You've been following somebody for a while now, and now you finally get to meet them or get closer to them, or, you know, your direction in life is um, really expanding. So overall, it's a very beautiful energy. Um, this month, the month of April, we have so much Aries energy that you might be feeling yourself pulled in a million different directions. But what this full moon in Scorpio is, um, is trying to say to you is that, there's something that's been um, inkling away at you and like kind of nudging at you in the back of your mind. And this is going to be coming to the forefront and it's going to be in regards to your, your philosophy and the way that you look at life. And that's a really big deal. All right. You're going to be able to look at it and you're going to be able to, you know, come to a completion that that's something that you believe in. And that's something that you're going to believe in from here forward until the next time it's time to change your beliefs, right? Because we are constantly evolving. Um, so there's no real say so about what you might be thinking about later, you know, and, and changing in, in regards to your, you know, thoughts and beliefs. This energy is going to be squaring your third house of short distance travel. You know, maybe you really want to travel but your job is so demanding and you always have to go into the office or um, maybe your siblings and your neighbors have been very needy of you and they're getting in the way of the you know your your ability to be able to kind of maintain some kind of freedom that's possible okay it's squaring uranus and jupiter so it's going to bring attention but the fact that uranus and jupiter are coming into a conjunction it's actually going to expand things in a very positive way in that third house of communication talking and writing siblings and neighbors um something is going to happen here on april 20th when that um you know jupiter and uranus conjunction come together this full moon is on the 23rd of april so that weekend through the first part of the week we're going to be feeling this really great expansion um, that might cause a little bit of tension for something completely different in our life, but they're coming together in some kind of way. So however this works for you, um, how, whatever, you know, just know that this too shall pass and try to take it as a learning experience if possible. Um, this energy is going to be squaring your 12th house of you know, sacrificial service, your self undoing, your repressions, you know, that the deep um, psychological, um, um, not, I wouldn't say issues, but because we all have them and I, I don't see them as issues, but you know, the things that are going on in the back of your mind that kind of inhibit you from self growth. Okay. This is going to be squaring your 12th house of, and Pluto has been in your 12th house now for a little while and it's going to be there for a little while it's going to back out go back to capricorn and then it's going to you know remain in um your 12th house for a really long time so the way that you think psychologically and the way that you um you know sacrifice yourself for the good of others or or not you know in this instance aquarius is humanitarian the fact that it's in your 12th house that might be something that's hard for you to do it's to sacrifice yourself for other people and maybe not expecting things in return but the fact that pluto's in there it's going to trans it's going to transform that part of your life in ways that you're not going to believe um the fact that pluto and is squaring uh scorpio pluto is the expositor of scorpio and scorpio is in your ninth house so i feel like you're really going to be letting go 
uh, some kind of maybe some kind of compulsion or some kind of um, obsession with something that was not um, beneficial to you, something that was holding you back. Um, and maybe it's going to be putting tension on, you know, the people that are closest to you. And maybe it's going to be putting tension on the way that you communicate. Um, that could be possible as well. Although on this, on the 20th of April, when this happens, it's really going to expand the way that you communicate about things because you're going to be able to see very clearly what it is that you're letting go of. Um, and it's going to be very helpful for you to uh, make sure you maintain communication. I know it's really hard in the middle of Mercury retrograde, right? Um, so this is going to also be an energy that is, you know, conjuncting your first house because, you know, this is Pisces, you're a Pisces rising. You have Saturn and Mars in there. You might be wanting to really take off with certain things in your life, but Saturn is telling you to slow down and really to look, at how this is going to affect your um, outlook on life or the way that people see you or your reput reputation in general. Um, we also have, you know, in your second house of money and your sense of values towards money, the way that you make money, you had your solar eclipse and Aries in that. And so maybe you started some kind of business, business venture um, that could be a possibility, right? Or uh, maybe you, you know, you owed money to your taxes and it's affecting the way that you make money because now you have to make payments on something else because on March 25th we had the lunar eclipse which is the first part of the solar eclipse and um, that was something that you had to balance out that's something that you had to look at and really um, put effort into to kind of even out your playing field so that you can be more successful in regards to your money so maybe now you just owe some money to other people or you know maybe they owe money to you and it was able to you know, maybe you got some kind of tax return or some kind of an, an inheritance money and it really took off your personal possessions, like in a good way, in a positive way. Maybe you're able to, you know, start a business or um, maybe you're thinking about it now. Let me get you guys your tarot. You guys got eight of pentacles, hard at work. Um, that makes sense. Um, you've been working really hard on something and you've been working and studying something. And the fact that this is a full moon in Scorpio reading in your ninth house, maybe you have been learning and now it's time to graduate. Um, that could be possible for you guys. Um, or maybe you've just been studying with a teacher that you're really interested in and you just can't seem to think about anything else. Maybe it's some kind of obsession with learning from somebody, um, of significance for you in your recent past. I'm going to get you your card. Recent past card. You guys got the Empress. Um, your abundance and your overall, um, you know, it rem reminds me of how the solar eclipse in Aries came about. The sense of values when it comes to money, right? The Empress is this goddess. She is the, um, you know, she's connected to the earth and she is not, not, she does not shy away from being abundant and letting, you know, the earth take care of her, right? Um, she has what she needs. She always has what she needs. People look, look up to her. Um, she's very beautiful, very attractive. So maybe you were thinking about your health from the inside out. Um, that could have been a philosophy of yours to take care of yourself better and a better way, right? Because you have Saturn and Mars in your first house. You're really looking at ways to care for yourself and to have that empress energy. And it seems to me like you found somebody or something that is helping you do that. Or maybe, you know, it's a completely opposite energy of you really th thinking about your foundation and you're, you know, balancing everything and living off the earth. And then, you know, you have your eight of pentacles energy, but you're working really hard on something. You're studying really, uh, really hard on something. And these are two things that have become very prominent and you know mean a lot to you right now upcoming future for pisces this one keeps wanting to come out knight of pentacles being very cautious where you spend your money okay this eight of pentacles leading to the knight of pentacles so you're going to be making progress in whatever it is that you are doing whether that is with your job with your money um, other people's money you know investments however you're going to be making some money here from what it is you're working on okay um and you're going to be able to have possibilities 
on what you want to do. I see you moving forward here with the Eight of Pentacles facing this way, the Knight of Pentacles facing this way. You're moving forward. You're going to be able to have options on what foundations you want to build for your life, where you want to put your money, where you want to invest. Um, the only thing about the Knight of Pentacles I always tell people is he still has some research to do. He's still learning. Um, so don't forget where you came from and always take your knowledge with you um, and trust yourself to build the kind of life that you want to for yourself. Your animal spirit card you got is the otter. He's so cute. He's one of my favorites. Um, if I remember correctly, it's a very playful, playful card. I'm looking for it right now. <clears throat> So when I, when I see the otter, I always say the same thing. Um, he, he tends to actually, I remember what it says. I don't even have to look, but I'll still look. Um, he's very playful. Okay. And he doesn't necessarily start things on his own. Um, but he works really hard to finish it. Okay. So maybe you might be <clears throat> working really hard towards something and then you end up, you know, being in business with some somebody else and then you kind of like take off with it like they trust you to um to to take over unobstructed joy playfulness contentment perhaps the most joyful creature within the animal spirit deck the otter represents absolute bliss otter energy is the playfulness of a child available to us at any age they have a giddiness and reverence for their life, for life itself, without the presence of doubt, worry, or skepticism. Imagine yourself with a little more otter energy. What would life look like? What would it take to bring you there? The otter card begs these questions and wants to transport us to that precious place as soon as possible. The celebration awaits. When in balance, full of love, needs nothing. When out of balance, gloomy sighs make silly excuses. To bring into balance, dance party or celebration. So maybe you're working really hard right now. And your philosophy is, you know, changing and the way that you look at life is changing and it's kind of taken a lot of your energy. Um, just don't forget to play. Okay. Don't forget to play. Um, don't forget to have joy in your life because, you know, sometimes we can get so wrapped up in these goals and how we want to see the world and how we want to live in our world that we forget to play. So you're being called to play here. I'm going to get you guys a money and job Oracle card. Since you have a financial house being affected this month for Pisces. You guys got toxic work environment. Okay. Maybe you're letting go of some toxicity. Maybe there's some toxicity going on in your work environment. Um, you also got shopping. <clears throat> maybe, you know, it stresses you out and you're, you know, becoming addicted to shopping. That could be possible. Um, I feel like you're going to be balancing out your work environment, maybe working somewhere else, maybe working in a different department, maybe thinking about it. Um, I feel like it's affecting you and something on your mind. Um, maybe you, you know, take that energy and you go shopping and you spend too much money because, you know, you're not talking about it. Um, you're not talking about the toxicity in your work environment. You just think that that's how it's supposed to be. You guys got receipts. Um, yeah, just um, just saying to, you know, save your receipts because there might be some kind of purchase that you need to return. We are in the Mercury retrograde phase. And um, sometimes you change your mind about things that you do buy during a Mercury retrograde season. Um, yeah, I just feel like maybe you're going to be shopping, saving some receipts and, you know, work's kind of stressful and toxic. Um, continue to keep your head down and focus on yourself because that's going to lead you to this foundation that you're, you're looking for and, um, this abundance that you're looking for and just stay away from the drama. Okay. Um, I wish you best, the best Pisces and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.